I'm Jim Leach and I'll be your host for the next hour as we discuss important issues facing San Clemente with the six candidates who hope to serve on the City Council for the next four years. Thank you for joining us. The South Orange County Economic Coalition and Cox Communications have teamed up to host a series of forums featuring local candidates on the ballot for the November 4th general election. We believe an informed electorate is a vital component of our democratic process, and it's an honor to bring this candidate forum to you. Today, we're pleased to welcome our candidates. They are Mickey Rathman, Ricardo Nickel, Tim Brown, Lori Donjak, Jim Dahl, and Kathy Ward. San Clemente voters will select three of these six candidates on November 4th. Here's the format for the forum. Each candidate will be allowed up to two minutes to make an opening statement. I will then pose a series of questions to which each candidate will have one minute to respond. At the end of these questions, each candidate will have one minute to provide a summary closing statement. Our first opening statement will be delivered by Mickey Rathman. Good afternoon. I am a local business owner, a local resident. I'm also a proud member of the San Clemente Chamber of Commerce and the Downtown Business Association. When visiting with fellow business owners, um, like a family who have a deli in downtown San Clemente were expressing their concern and their frustrations over making improvements to their business and threw their hands up and gave up after many months of trying. They inspired me to run for city council. In visiting with a neighbor who saved and saved to buy a beautiful ocean view home in San Clemente and then as years went by trees grew and blocked his beautiful view. He feels frustrated in that he pays property taxes for a home that's priced with an ocean view but no longer has one. I'm running for city council because I share in my neighbor's frustration and my fellow business owner's frustrations. We have a beautiful community, our San Clemente Village by the Sea, and in addition to the beauty that has been given to us by Mother Nature, much of our village character is made up by our local business owners, our local events, and our amazing restaurants. I think it's unfortunate that our current council does not have a local business owner on the dais. Another reason why I was inspired to run for San Clemente City Council and to represent my communities and my neighbors. I am concerned with the opening of the company stores, our outlet malls uh, that are coming and wanna make sure that there's collaboration uh, between our existing businesses, uh, as well as the new folks that are coming to town who are excited to welcome, but we wanna make sure uh, that everything and everyone works together and that we maintain our charm. I look forward to visiting with you more this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Our next opening statement comes from Ricardo Nickel. Thank you, Jim. Uh, and thank you, San Clemente, for considering my candidacy to serve San Clemente as a city council member. Uh, I became a San Clemente local uh, at the age of three when my parents moved to San Clemente in 1957. I attended local schools, uh, Concordia, Las Palmas, the Mission School in San Juan Capistrano, and I graduated from San Clemente High School in 1972. I grew up swimming and surfing at uh, San Onofre, Riviera, T Street, fishing on the pier. And I live with my wife, Sylvia, and our three sons near the old uh, San Clemente Municipal Golf Course. And my parents, Beverly and Ricardo Nichols, still live on Ola Vista in the home where I grew up. I practice law in Santa Ana, and I've practiced law in Orange County since 1989. I run my own practice. I spent 32 years in the Army, the Army Reserves, and the Army National Guard. I retired as a full colonel in 2011, and I served in uh, Afghanistan. Uh, Iraq uh, and uh, Panama. If you elect me to the City Council, uh, I will listen to and learn from all of you who love San Clemente. I will work hard to approach the challenges we face with wisdom and skill, and together we'll find sensible solutions to issues like beach erosion, the uh, San Onofre plant decommissioning, traffic congestion, and uh, and the Miramar Theater, and, and most importantly, uh, fiscal accountability. Uh, I have a, uh, a, a passion for service, and uh, I, I look forward to, to serving uh, San Clemente, the, the classic beach town that I grew up in, and uh, I hope to, to help keep it as nice as a, uh, for my children and for future generations as it was for me uh, as, as I was growing up here. Thank you. Thank you. Our next opening statement is from Tim Brown. 
Hi, my name is Tim Brown. I am a 14-year resident of San Clemente. I married a, a native, and we have four daughters together, which attend local schools. We love San Clemente. It's been a tremendous community, and we are excited to live here for the rest of our lives. I got involved in politics in San Clemente approximately six years ago when I saw a series of projects that I was concerned about that affected our city that I wanted to be involved on. Since then, I have been involved in helping shape what I believe has been a better landscape for the city of San Clemente. I'm serving currently on the city council. I was mayor pro tem for two years and I'm currently serving as mayor. Beyond that, I'm an executive working for lease advisors in San Diego and pride myself on also remaining involved in other countywide issues. I'm the chair of the infrastructure committee for the ACCOC, the Association of California Cities of Orange County, as well as the vice chair of the decommissioning panel for San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station. Ultimately, what does this all mean? I think San Clemente is well positioned for the future. The current city council has done a good job of making sure that we're fiscally sound, that we are prepared well with the new general plan and implementation measures that are clearly defined and have set a path out for the future. However, change is coming to San Clemente, significant change with outlet malls coming in on Marblehead as well as the homes, the I-5 widening, the Lapata extension, the Pico Bridge being redone, and all of this change is going to have an effect on residents and business owners, something that I'd like to help with, something I'd like to shape, and ultimately something to contribute to the better San Clemente for the future. I think this is a tremendous community, and my goal is to leave it better than I found it. And part of that is ensuring that in all these projects that come to San Clemente, that San Clemente maintains that essential quality of life that has made it so unique, something that I fell in love with and something that I want to ensure that we have for future generations. Again, my name is Tim Brown. I'm excited to run for city council again, and I ask for your vote. Thank you. Our next opening statement comes from Lori Donchak. Hello. Hello, San Clemente, and thank you. My family and I are proud to live in our community. We've lived here for over 15 years, and it's my pleasure to run for re-election on, on the San Clemente City Council. My thank you has to do with your involvement over my past term. Together, we've done some amazing things. We've created the new general plan for our city. We've re received a triple-A bond rating from Standard & Poor's during some of the roughest of economic times. And for the first time in San Clemente's history, we ha are voted one of the 100 safest cities in the United States. These are wonderful accomplishments, and we did them together. I'm running for re-election, and I respectfully ask for both your support and your vote. If I'm re-elected, I have five priorities. One is traffic. I plan to reinitiate the traffic task force. With the La Pata extension and the freeway expansions ahead of us, it's going to be very important to have leadership in all things to do traffic related. Uh, secondly, I commit to uh, financial stewardship of that AAA bond rating. We should never, ever spend more than we have. Uh, we need a depreciation fund for our peer, and that would be on my short list for next year. Um, thirdly, I'm committed to our beaches. I promise that we'll get those clean restrooms done. I'm interested in sand nourishment, and I'm interested in protecting our beach trail and perhaps even extending it further south than it is currently. Um, finally, I'm a very good communicator. When I was mayor, I created the Mayor's Walk. When I was mayor, I created the Mayor's Blog. I pride myself on being responsive, and you can count on me to represent you with all of my integrity. So thank you very much, and I respectfully ask for your vote in November, and I'm Lori Donchak. Thank you. Thanks very much. Next up, candidate Jim Dahl. Good afternoon. I'm Jim Dahl, a 50-year resident of San Clemente. My wife Alice and I have two children and their spouses and five grandchildren, all living in San Clemente. I retired as a fire captain after 38 years with the city of San Clemente and the OCFA. From 1996 to 19, or 2012, I was a city council member and mayor four terms. I think the biggest issues of bringing forth before us in the, in the next few years are, number one, the hospital, the possible impending closure of San Clemente Hospital, paramedic and ambulance service, law enforcement, and of course, our beautiful beaches, parks, and all our recreation facilities. I had the opportunity while I was on city council for those 16 years to be involved in the development of all our parks that we have today that are very new and very important. Major highway improvements will also affect us in the next coming years, especially with the widening of Interstate 5 and the rebuilding of the Pico interchange. It's going to cause problems and in traffic and timing. 
So I think it's very important for the city to be very proactive with their public information department to work closely with the highway patrol, the contractors, Caltrans, and our Orange County Sheriff's Department. We need to promote business in San Clemente. We need to include all our businesses, not only in, in, every, in every part of the community. We need to uh, retain businesses we've had for a long period of time. We need to uh, complete our general plan and its zoning amendments and ordinances. Our local coastal plan is very important so our neighbors can get permits very quickly instead of having to go all the way to Long Beach to attend meetings to get permits for their uh, remodels or their building. And of course, sand replenishment is very high on my list of issues. Last uh, two years ago, I was able to go back to the uh, Corps of Engineers Review Board and testify on behalf of the city to uh, get our uh, sand replenishment program moving. Thank you. Thank you. Our final opening statement is from Kathy Ward. Hi, my name is Kathy Ward. I am running for planning, I'm sorry, for city council for the city of San Clemente, and I would like your vote. My professional background, I am a certified court reporter. I am presently retired, and like I said, I am currently serving on your planning commission. My campaign is all based on quality of life issues. Quality of life is very important to the residents and the business owners of the city of San Clemente. Every decision that we make, every road that we add, every use that we add will affect and shape the future of San Clemente. I, uh, I think I am uniquely qualified as a planning commissioner to add to the city council. I am presently running for an empty seat that is uh, being left by a council member. And uh, since I have been working for the city of San Clemente already for a year and a half working on the general plan, I think I can better serve the city of San Clemente and hit the ground running and not have any uh, lag time to where I would have to learn how the city operates. I am a fiscal conservative. I believe in not spending money until we have it. If you find that uh, some of our candidates will say that they will pay for a parking structure and just finance it, I would say that the city of San Clemente does not do that. We do not go into debt. I promise that I would be the person that uh, makes sure that our town goes in the direction that the residents want and the residents' vision for our beach town uh, be preserved. Uh, the residents in San Clemente said that they want their small town atmosphere preserved. I will work to do that, and I promise that I will be your representative in all issues. Thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you all. We'll now begin the question portion of the forum, and each candidate will have one minute in turn to respond to the question posed. Our first question involves the delicate balance every city faces between quality of life and economic development. For several years, San Clemente community leaders, businesses, and residents have debated the appropriate amount and type of growth that takes place in San Clemente. With Marblehead getting going full force, recent developments to the east, the La Pata extension, the I-5 widening, there's a lot going on that can impact the economic vitality and historical integrity of the city. Please spend a few minutes talking, uh, touching on your position on growth in the city, and then we'll delve into more specific issues and other questions. Let's start with Mr. Nickel. Thank you, Jim. Uh, yes, maintaining San Clemente's uh, unique historical character, especially in terms of uh, some of the uh, architecture that is associated with the, the early days of Ole Hansen, the Spanish colonial revival uh, architecture, that's something that uh, we want to maintain. Uh, but at the same time, um, we have a lot of new projects that we need to move forward on and we need to make work. Uh, the outlet malls, uh, I don't think anybody uh, who's on the city council now had uh, voted on whether or not that was a good project. Uh, that debate is over. Uh, we need to make sure that, that that is a good project and it, and it works for San Clemente. Uh, I want to support small businesses in San Clemente. Uh, one thing I will never do uh, as a city councilman is propose selling city property uh, in, the, in the North Beach or Pier Bowl areas to developers who want to uh, overdevelop our, our beachfront, which is our, which is our most important treasure. Thank you. Your position on growth and management in the city, Mr. Brown. Well, I think that there's a, a perception that if you stand for economic development that you would be considered uh, to be pro-growth. 
or likewise, if you are you know, concerned about growth and about uh, concern, further development, then you put it as a secondary concern, the economic development. And I, I really think that's a fallacy. I think in San Clemente, what, um, what we've really seized upon here is a, is a very unique thing, and I've seen a few other beach communities do this, and that is, is you make what is essential and excellent about our community, which is that beach charm, that small town feel, and you really preserve that, hone it, and make it great. And that is what attracts the businesses, attracts the residents, make them want to be there, and ultimately drives growth because of the uniqueness of the community and how wonderful it is. That's what make, makes people want to be there. You know, efforts of revitalization, I think, is a wonderful term to use. But if we just do what we do well, then the growth will come, and it will come in a way that we need to shape and ensure that fits with our community at large. And so I think we can have economic growth as well as have uh, smart development. We just have to make sure we have the right leaders in place. And uh, I feel like I'm one of those leaders to assist that. Thank you. We're talking about growth and development in San Clemente with candidates for the city council. We turn to Ms. Donchak. Okay, great. Uh, managed growth. Well, first of all, as uh, all of us in the community know, 65,000 is about the top of what our population uh, capacity is in San Clemente. We are at build out. And so going forward, I think it's most useful for you to understand how I'm going to think about how we manage what we've got and how we accept change in the community. Um, the first principle I use when I'm making decisions is what's it going to feel like for future generations because I feel like we have an obligation to our kids and their kids to have the kind of life we all enjoy in San Clemente. So that's uh, one of my principles. The second one is, is it fair and equitable? So if a debel developer wants to come into town, I want to understand what that feels like for all of us, not just for the developer. And uh, then finally, is that decision a reversible decision? Because we have been trusted with many historic elements in our town, and once they're gone, they don't come back. So um, as we go forward, those are going to be some of the criteria I use to look at some of our issues. And in the broadest scheme of things, I think transportation is going to be the place that's going to require the most scrutiny in the coming years. Thank you. Questions about growth and development in San Clemente. We turn to Mr. Dahl. San Clemente has gone through many, many evolutions over the last uh, 75 years. Now we've gotten to the point where uh, we're at build out. We haven't got very many properties left uh, that are vacant or have no buildings on them that need to be uh, developed. We have great strict criteria in our community for building structures and businesses. I think if we follow our guidelines with our historic properties uh, lists and uh, work towards building nice facilities, will be very well suited. During the next uh, four or five years, I can see small infill throughout the community. And uh, hopefully, with uh, a good stewardship of our council, our planning commission, and our uh, economic development uh, team, we'll be able to have nice, responsible development. We're talking about growth and development in San Clemente, we turn to Ms. Ward. Since 1985, our city has been in a state of, of growth. We built in the ranch areas, and we've been doing nothing but build, 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 and add many homes and uh, many businesses. So what I would like to see is our attention finally turn to our original city, our older part of our city, that has been somewhat on the back burner. And we haven't seen the improvements because we've been so busy in the ranch areas. In 2008, residents said that they wanted their small town atmosphere preserved. And that is what I would like to see in downtown and in our, in our city. I want the downtown to maybe become a historic district, take pride in the unique and charming uh, quality that they have that they can't find anywhere else. In North Beach, I want to see North Beach also become a, a historic district and a gathering place. And I think that will help the economic vitality of both those areas. Thank you. Your position on growth and management in the city, Ms. Rathman? Absolutely. It's a really exciting time for the city of San Clemente. We are poised um, for absolutely wonderful growth and developments. 
Um, my fellow leaders in the city have shared with you how we're sort of at that build out point where we have sort of a lot of key elements within our city. And I think it's really important for us to make smart decisions about where we see growth and how we see that growth. I think it's important for us as a city to use a portion of our transient occupancy tax to employ an economic development person, someone who is an expert in this area, who can be well versed on what's important for our historical preservation, what's important in maintaining our village character, as well as what's important to our residents, what services uh, they're interested in. If you look at the historic casino as an example, someone wanted to change and do something to that, and our historic sort of leadership team rallied and said, look, this isn't good for our city. And they decided that that person was out and someone knew about it and did something amazing and turned it into a community um, place where everyone could use. So I think that if we do make smart decisions, we'll all be better. Thank you. Thank you very much. Traffic is certainly an issue of concern in any growing city, but San Clemente seems to be ground zero for Orange County's transportation conundrum. These challenges are highlighted when an accident all but shuts down the I-5, all but paralyzing the city and the region as a whole. With the 241 completion no longer on the table and the widening of the I-5 freeway underway, what specific solutions do you have to mitigate future transportation related impacts on your city? And what do you personally hope to do about it if elected? We'll start with Mr. Brown. Well, I think the importance of that question is, is how do you mitigate the impacts on the residents? Uh, I am concerned about regional transportation issues, but I'm primarily concerned with how those regional transportation issues affect our residents. I think we're going to learn a lot about how our, our city circulates once the pod extension is completed. This is project has been on the books, I think, since 1964. And finally, upon completion, we're going to have a way for residents, and especially in the ranch, outlying ranch areas, to be able to leave San Clemente without depending on the 5 freeway. I, you know, with this coming into place as well as the I-5 widening and the Pico um, interchange being redone, we're going to see a lot of changes that ultimately will, I think, improve the quality of life for our residents long term, even if it does mean short term uh, inconvenience. But I'd like to see the results of those projects and how San Clemente moves and feels uh, before I look forward to any regional transportation issues to solve what I believe to be um, resident parking issues. I guess it's a, a good problem to have when you have traffic. If you're that quaint of a community, people always want to be there and they just drive around a lot. So um, I think that's always a good challenge to have, but it's something that we really need to work hard to ensure that the residents aren't impacted. Thank you. Talking traffic solutions and impacts, Ms. Donchak. Okay, um, a couple of things. First of all, I'm gonna be very pragmatic in my answer. Um, we have the Lapata extension coming. I'm proud to say I was part of the delegation that went to Washington to get that back door to our city open via some funding. So that project is one we're gonna keep our eyes on. Um, I'm also the one of the three representatives for District 5 on the Orange County Transportation Authority. And I raised my hand for that extremely time consuming responsibility because to have San Clemente at the table where the gateway to Orange County, believe it or not, at the south end, um, to have us at the table during the freeway expansion is a real important thing. Um, finally, um, I mentioned earlier I plan to reinitiate the traffic task force. That's dedicated to local traffic task force uh, and traffic problems, and I'm committed to getting that up and running should I be reelected. Thank you. We're talking traffic impacts and solutions. Mr. Dahl. Traffic has always been a problem in San Clemente, and it seems to ebb and flow with the economy. During the last uh, three or four years, as the economy started to come back, traffic has increased in our, in our city, especially on Interstate 5. Uh, as a firefighter, I witnessed nor numerous accidents uh, on the Interstate 5 that would shut down the road completely, pushing all the traffic onto the local uh, feeder streets, which caused absolute gridlock in San Clemente. The widening of I-5 will improve things. Also, the widening of the Pico interchange will also improve our uh, traffic and circulation. Uh, I would like to press for the extension of the HOV lanes from Pico all the way to the San Diego County line. I'm uh, currently a member of the San Diego Association of Government's Borders Committee, and uh, I've been talking with them. Uh, their rapid tra or RTP plan is about to be certified, and I would like to have our extension of the, the uh, HOV lanes included in their program. Talking about specific solutions to traffic impacts in San Clemente, Ms. Ward. 
Specifically for traffic in, going in and out of our city, I think the La Pata closure of the gap is the answer to uh, alternative route out of town. I also believe that uh, the widening of the five freeway is going to help with the Pico interchange bridge being changed. Uh, the on and off exits are gonna be better. Uh, I would like to see the five uh, carpool lane widened continuously through the end of our town instead of just stopping at Pico. Along with traffic in, in our town, most of our residents have said they do not want more traffic. Our, we have hired very good traffic engineers. They have uh, synced the lights on all of El Camino, on Pico. They have done Vista Hermosa, and they're gonna do Los Maris, and also Estrella area. That, to me, is going to make better uh, choices and better traffic movement. Also, I am for uh, adding bike lanes and providing multimodal better transportation throughout our town so that you do not have to use a car. Thank you. We're talking about traffic solutions in San Clemente, Ms. Rathman. I wish there was a magic wand that I possessed that could instantly solve the traffic issues in San Clemente, but it is a tough one. We are at the gateway on the south side to beautiful Orange County, uh, and there's a lot of travelers who come through our city. The La Pata extension will definitely help when that's open, giving us another way in and out of San Clemente in regular times as well as during emergencies. The other thing that I think is great about San Clemente and that in further developing our economic stature within our community is that people can live, work, and play within San Clemente and not necessarily have to travel long distances throughout Orange County for employment. We have many local business owners such as myself as well as nationally recognized brands uh, that employ many people within our community, Rainbow Sandals, Yo Dog Marketing, Pickup Sticks, just to name a few. Um, it's an amazing community where people get to live, work, play, and not necessarily have to get caught up in that Pico Pinch traffic problem that we have sometimes. Thank you. And finally, Mr. Nickel. Uh, I support uh, designating a, a city staff liaison to work with uh, Caltrans to keep the public informed uh, of closures and detours during the I-5 wide widening. Um, I, I'm in favor of implementing a trolley system that connects remote parking uh, with uh, businesses, downtown businesses and beach access, especially during the summer. Um, I would like to see uh, improvement in walkability throughout the city, particularly in some of our uh, older neighborhoods. I would support a robust uh, sidewalk construction program in our older neighborhoods. And I would take a, a, a long look at redesigning El, the uh, El Camino Real portion of the T-zone to improve tra traffic flow uh, in the downtown area. Thank you. Our next question, throughout Orange County and up and down the state, there have been growing concerns about unfunded pension liabilities and lifetime medical benefits for city employees. How, in your opinion, has San Clemente managed its obligations to current and future retired civil servants while protecting taxpayers from the costly ramifications associated with these retirement benefits? What do you believe needs to be done moving forward? We'll start with Ms. Donchak. All right, uh, San Clemente is a little different from other cities in that we just joined the CalPERS uh, program this year by unanimous vote of the city council. Uh, needless to say, it's um, a stunning, I I'm sorry. What? <laughs> All right, let's start again. Are, are you gesturing at me? All right. All right, let me start over again. Uh, San Clemente is um, unique from other cities in Orange County in that we just joined the CalPERS system this year by unanimous vote by the City Council. Uh, it's recognized and it's an extremely large cost center. And um, some of the things we've put in place is a long-term contract with our uh, employees. We are working to manage down the exposure associated with some of these unfunded pension liabilities. And um, importantly, we're working in collaboration with the city staff because while we want to contain the costs, we don't at all want to compromise the services that our city staff provide to San Clemente. Thank you. Thank you. We're talking about pension liabilities and management thereof, Mr. Dahl. Pensions, pensions, everywhere. It's a big topic in the state of California over the last few years. The city of San Clemente has been very unique. It had its own pension system along with Social Security for many, many years. And finally, this last two years, of the um, Association of Employees and the city have come together and changed the plan to uh, PERS, which is a very 
good plan and it's uh, well maintained and has a high rate of return. Uh, we also have social security in our city, which is very unusual for local governments. Local governments usually just have a statewide pension plan or a Schedule 37 uh, county plan. So it's very uh, unique that the city now has Social Security and PERS together. So consequently, the employees are paying a very high rate of uh, contribution to their uh, accounts, and which is, which is good for the community and it's very physically uh, imperative that we continue on that trend. Thank you. Your perspective on pension and health, pension and health care liabilities in San Clemente, Ms. Ward. First of all, pension liability reform and the problems of it are a statewide problem. CalPERS, uh, many of our public employees, uh, they have tried to uh, redo some of their contracts. Uh, they are trying to make sure that they are better uh, invested in funds to fund these contracts. Um, I have not been privy to the uh, salary negotiations because I have not been a member of city council. However, I am aware that our city just went to CalPERS. My husband is a CalPERS uh, retiree also. What I would say is that this is a statewide uh, uh, problem that we have with rising pensions and uh, all of the organizations are going to uh, methods to try to reduce those uh, new contracts for new hirees. And we are, as a statewide, uh, trying to solve these problems so it wouldn't just be our city alone. Thank you. Talking about pension liabilities and health care for retirees, Ms. Rathman. Taking care of our retirees and past uh, civil servants of our community is really important. Members of your city council are all volunteers, and we work in collaboration with our city manager, assistant city manager, and other regular full-time staff uh, to manage this process. San Clemente has done an amazing job in the past of being very fiscally responsible, and I do not see that changing in relation to our retirement plans, our PERS, and our involvement uh, with Social Security for uh, those individuals who work for our city. Uh, we do have a new city manager and a new assistant city manager uh, that have joined the amazing team at the city of San Clemente and I am looking forward to being able to work with them um, and to help uh, hold them accountable um, to making sure that our city maintains its outstanding financial status. Thank you. We offer this question to Mr. Nickel. Well we have an obligation to uh, city employees uh, who are under contract now and city employees who have dedicated uh, their lives to serving the city in the past. Uh, so I think the obligation, uh, what city council members are going to have to do in the future is to continue to uh, review city programs uh, and, and public employee requirements to ensure that uh, we're being adequately and efficiently served. Um, we want to make sure that uh, the, our city bureaucracy doesn't become uh, bloated and uh, we want to be vigilant in uh, eliminating uh, waste wherever we can. So it's, it's, it requires constant vigilance and leadership to make sure that we're being adequately and efficiently served by our public employees. They do work for us. Thank you. Pension liabilities, Mr. Brown. You know, this is a question which um, means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. For San Clemente, we are in a very unique position in this regard. Um, but I, I think it's important to recognize the good work that's been done on this. San Clemente has uh, gone through a series of pretty difficult recession, uh, recessions over the past few years, but we've done a good job of maintaining um, a very fiscally prudent path. And in doing so, also, we've been very responsible in the way that we have managed our pensions as well as uh, our hiring and uh, our HR practices. And so because of that, we've been able to avoid a lot of the tumult, a lot of the uh, um, different uh, challenges that other cities have had. But make no mistake about it, the city council is very vigilant that we are maintaining financial best practices regardless of the, the mechanism by which we're practicing it. And pensions and vendor contracts and everything we do, we're ensuring that the residents are getting exactly what they expect and more, and then also ensuring that um, any of those uh, employees and, and uh, different folks that are employed by the city are providing a good service, but also being taken care of for the service they provide. Thank you. Next question. Downtown San Clemente is the economic heartbeat of the city, a historical and cultural gem and a tourist mecca. Recently, there have been several proposals to redevelop portions of downtown or upgrade existing buildings. 
What is your vision for the future of downtown? And how do you propose balancing the need to preserve the area and at the same time protect private property rights? We'll start with Mr. Dahl. Downtown San Clemente is a jewel of Orange County. And councils in the past have worked very hard to keep it that way. We've worked very closely with the Downtown Business Association and property owners to be able to create a venue that people will like to come to, to eat, to shop, and to recreate. During the last couple of years, there have been some real challenges to the property owners in the T-zone. Not only parking, but the restriction on the ability to improve their properties. It's very important to the community to be able to keep that small town community feel, but yet support the property owners and their vision of what they would like their properties to be. We have historic structures. We have some non-historic structures in the T-zone. We've worked very hard to improve the sidewalks, the uh, ambiance of uh, Del Mar and the T-zones. And in the following years, we'll have to work even harder working with the community and the property owners. Thank you. We're talking downtown preservation and development in San Clemente, Ms. Ward. Downtown San Clemente is our historic downtown, the heart of our town, the center of our town. It is charming and unique. It is our small town beach town. It is where everyone wants to go to spend time. My vision for this downtown is that we become a historic district. We not just use the words, this is our historic downtown, we become a historic district. I believe that will bring more tourism, it will preserve the downtown, and it will keep people, it will keep it something special that people will want to come to for uh, many years in the future. I think that uh, as far as property rights, our city council, they decided to limit the stories to two stories, and that was because of the limits on the lot sizes, that not much more could be done with that. And they finally said, let's be done with it, and done with three stories, and we went to two. That was in order to, to restore and preserve our downtown. I think that is the strength that we have, is its charm, and I would not uh, change it and uh, redevelop it into something different. Thank you. Your vision of the future of downtown, Ms. Rathman. San Clemente is a great example of the American dream. Ole Hansen created the first developed community within the state of California and had an amazing dream for a place where people could live and play and enjoy the ocean. Our downtown community um, is beautiful. We have many local business owners there who are living their American dream. And I want to make sure that it's easy for our business owners and for our residents to get things done. It's really challenging right now for people to uh, get things done, make improvements to their businesses downtown, to make improvements to their home downtown. Um, and I think that we can best preserve and foster appropriate growth um, by looking within and looking to our local uh, leaders within our community, business owners and residents, and to help them to um, have a process where it's easily outlined on how to make improvements. I feel that it's a real struggle for people and something that I hear a lot about in the community and I'm dedicated to uh, helping make sure that we can preserve our beautiful downtown uh, by making it easy for people to live their American dream. Thank you. Question on preservation and development in the downtown area, Mr. Nickel. Well, essentially I, I agree with uh, Ms. Rathman. Uh, we, we do have to uh, maintain uh, the architectural legacy of the downtown area. But at the same time, um, business owners uh, in the downtown uh, district, uh, they're, they're the backbone of our local economy, and uh, they deserve to be uh, served by city council members and, and by, the, uh, by the staff and, and city departments uh, fairly, efficiently, and with common sense. And as far as the uh, balancing that needs to be done to preserve uh, San Clemente's legacy versus the rights of property owners, um, I, I believe that the, the, that the general plan should, uh, should allow for projects to be looked at on a case-by-case -case ba basis without imposing uh, rigid requirements uh, that are, that are cookie-cutter in nature. Uh, I think it should become a lot easier for, for business owners to improve and develop their businesses in the downtown area. And I also think that we need to look at, again, we need to look at redesigning uh, El Camino Real between in the business area to improve traffic flow. 
Thank you. Thank you. Same question to Mr. Brown. You know, we've spent almost uh, five years, uh, just over six years, I believe, I was on the General Plan Advisory Committee, uh, really contemplating these questions about, you know, what is the, uh, uh, the look and the feel for the downtown area, which is a beautiful gem in the middle of San Clemente. All of us would agree on that. But we provided a framework for the future that our community has all weighed in on, that we've all provided feedback on, that provides an excellent guide for the future. A lot of these questions that have been raised about traffic, about what the look and feel is, these are questions that have been answered over the past few years and answered, I think, very successfully. Uh, I advocated for keeping that charm in the downtown area. Um, part of what I think that is the wrong step is to try and emulate newer development in town, for example, the outlets which are coming in in Marblehead. You know, if, if you want to retain the charm, don't try and pretend like you're something you're not. I think we need to remember that what makes San Clemente unique is that small town village character. The general plan has really fit well to that, and I believe we should move forward impl putting implementation measures in place that will help really lock that in for future generations. And I'm excited about the future for the downtown. Thank you. We're talking about downtown preservation and property redevelopment. Ms. Donchak. Okay. And as you've seen, everybody loves our downtown, and it's not just the place, it's the stories that happen in that place. Um, I happen to be a very small government kind of person, and so when I uh, think about this question, I think about the things that clearly fall in the government's corner. So some things that are in our general plan that the next seated council should consider. We need to get the public library open. It's a project in motion, and uh, we need to make sure that that key component on Main Street um, opens up to our residents in a timely fashion. We need to get the utilities undergrounded because uh, that's an opportunity that will activate both the Paseos and the downtown area and make it a more beautiful place. And then finally, we need to bring mobility to da the downtown so that people feel they can get there other than in a car. So those would be the big three, and um, I'll stop right there. Thank you. On to the next question, nuclear energy generation at the San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station was shut down late last year. Since then, there have been several scenarios discussed in terms of the process, timing, and funding mechanisms for its closure. Do you believe the city has done enough to voice the concerns of its citizens? And if not, what would you propose the city do if you were elected to ensure the safety and protect the interests of your constituents? And we'll start with Ms. Ward. First of all, San Clemente did not sign up to be a storage facility for spent fuel rods from the nuclear facility at Songs. The federal government was supposed to have a place to take those, uh, that fuel away. So what I would do, and I would like our city to be the first to do, is I would want to do a resolution stating to the, go the federal government that we want that storage found and we want that spent fuel removed as soon as possible. I want other cities to join us in the resolution, but I think our city, for the safety of our citizens, we should be first. We should do the resolution first. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're looking for perspectives on songs, the closure and safety. Turn to Ms. Rathman. Well, it was disappointed, disappointing that a large number of members of our community lost their jobs with the closing of songs. It was a safety issue that kept me up at night wondering how safe we were um, with that plant running within our community. So now that it's closed, I think that it's really important for the city of San Clemente to be the squeaky wheel, to make sure that we are inspecting what we are expecting. Edison has said um, for more than 20 years that when this plant closed, that the spent rods would be dry cast and moved out of San Clemente. So we need to be the squeaky wheel. We need to be sort of, you know, poking and letting our state regulators know who are ultimately responsible for making sure that this happens, that it is important to the city of San Clemente. And just because Songs is closed doesn't mean that we've forgotten about it. Um, I do think it's an important issue to many people in our community. Um, I am one of those. Um, so I definitely commit to uh, being one of those squeaky wheels to make sure um, that Songs gets closed and that our public safety is maintained at its highest levels. Thank you. Question is, has the city done enough to voice concerns of citizens relative to the closure of songs? What would you do if elected to ensure the safety and protect the interest of citizens? Mr. Nickel. Well, this is, this is one of the most important and potentially the most dangerous issue that we faced. Uh, in the past, uh, city councils throughout the, uh, throughout the South County area passed resolutions calling for the closure of songs. Curiously, the San Clemente City Council at the time 
uh, was not as strong uh, for uh, demanding the closure of songs, particularly after the, uh, the failures with the steam generators. Uh, we have to do everything we can uh, to, to ensure that dry cast storage is done with the highest uh, degree of safety and technology. And we have to, because we're in, the, in, in, in one of the highest risk tsunami and earthquake zones in the world, we have to do everything we can to, to, to make sure that those fuel rods are moved and moved as soon as possible. We can't wait for a national repository. Our risk, is un the, the risk that we're facing is unique. It's more serious than it is in, uh, in other areas that have uh, nuclear waste facilities. And we need to work very, very hard to get those uh, spent fuel rods and that nuclear waste out of here as soon as possible before anybody else. Thank you. Your perspective on the city's response to the closure of songs, Mr. Brown. Well, as the vice chair of the San Onofre um, Nuclear Generating Station Decommissioning uh, Committee, which has uh, over 20 members, which have various local electeds, as well as uh, environmental groups and other um, uh, activists, uh, I've attended almost a dozen meetings over the past year, particularly focused on this issue. And it's fascinating to watch as people have all sorts of different theories and ideas about exactly what should be done when there's just a few realities we're presented with. Number one, spent fuel storage is best in dry casks as opposed as opposed to storage ponds because of the points of failure. It's important that we find a way to get those storage facilities into dry cast storage, the, 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 the rods into dry cast storage as soon as possible. In Fukushima, that was the only part that actually worked well was everything in dry cask was unruptured and undisturbed despite a massive um, disturbance there that disrupted the plant. And so it's important that we don't delay to getting to dry cast storage. But most important is instead of being an election issue, we should have citizens engaging outside of campaigning and election to try and understand what the issues are and become informed on the risks we face. No doubt the federal government should be held accountable for their failure to move these. But ultimately, it is the federal government's responsibility. Thank you. Talking about the song's closure and response, Ms. Donchek. Uh, I have been a, consi a consistent representative of the concerns co about songs to our neighbor to the south. When I was mayor, I organized a series of three workshops where people could get the information from all different view views. And in fact, we did put a resolution out there um, to call attention to the need to make sure that the uh, situation at Songs was handled safely. In fact, this morning I met with our city manager and I've put on the agenda for November a resolution that's been composed by San Clemente Green and some other representative groups that address the issue of the spent fuel waste and the nuclear uh, rods that have been talked about my, by my colleagues. Um, I think it's important that we keep our public safety at the highest possible levels because even though the um, potential concerns have lessened, they are still very present. And so I will be a strong advocate to coordinating with the regional safety needs that are attendant with almost any energy source, but especially nuclear energy. Thank you. The questions on songs and the city response, Mr. Dahl. As a firefighter, I was on an offsite assessment team with the San Clemente Fire Department, Orange County Fire Authority during the years of operations of songs. Since the decommissioning has started, it's very important that all those fuel rods be taken out of the pools and put into dry cask as soon as possible, as soon as it's physically possible. Also, during my years on the city council, I had a chance to uh, interact with our uh, electeds, uh, our state senators, and also our uh, congressmen. I think we should work very closely with Senator Feinstein, Senator Boxer, and uh, Congressman Issa to find a long-term solution for storage of nuclear waste. Uh, in Europe, they reprocess. In the United States, we don't. And so consequently, that's why we have all this spent nuclear fuel at all these plants. So it, we need to find a repository. Uh, Nevada was an opportunity, but unfortunately, the uh, powers that be in Nevada uh, knocked that out of the picture. So I think we would need to work with our electeds, Senator Feinstein, Senator Boxer, and uh, Congressman Issa to find a solution. Thank you, and thank you candidates for your thoughtful responses. We now move to closing statements of one minute each, and we'll begin with Ms. With Ms. Rathman. I think that I'm in a unique position to represent you, the residents, uh, local business owners, and leaders in our community on our city council. I've lived in San Clemente for 15 years. Uh, it was the best move that I ever made. Uh, my husband and I love that we get to live in a community uh, where we can run our businesses, uh, enjoy our friends and family, um, and the beautiful gifts that Mother Nature uh, has presented us there. 
I think that my generation is the future of San Clemente and that as you look forward uh, to a community that you want your children uh, to be able to enjoy with beautiful uh, clean beaches, uh, lots of local character, uh, historical elements, um, and a great place, um, your vote would be very well served uh, in choosing Mickey Rathman when you go uh, to your election place on November 4th. Thank you. Thank you. Closing statement from Mr. Nickel. Thanks, Jim. Uh, as your homegrown uh, San Clemente candidate, uh, I feel confident uh, that I have a pretty good idea uh, of what San Clemente is, is supposed to look like. Uh, I promise to be, if I'm elected, I'll be uh, an inclusive uh, member of the city council, uh, and, I'll, and I'll be serving all of San Clemente's residents. So wherever you live, uh, east or west of the I-5, Talega, Forster Ranch, uh, Southwest San Clemente or Rancho San Clemente. I'll actively promote citizen access and transparency in city government. Uh, I believe in user-friendly government and uh, city council members and, and city staff work for you. I won't waste your money. Uh, I've run a business. I've managed military budgets and contracts. You deserve value for your tax dollars and have a right uh, to fiscal responsibility, accountability, and full financial disclosure. Public safety uh, must remain a top priority. Our city is relatively safe, but we face challenges. At La Pata Extension, Outlet Mall will bring more traffic and visitors. Uh, homelessness presents an ongoing problem, and our police, fire, and emergency services need to be funded to keep pace with the issues. Thanks for your vote. Thank you very much. Closing statement from Mr. Brown. Hey, it's been an honor to serve the city of San Clemente as a council person and as a mayor, and I am, uh, I am grateful for the opportunity to contribute to a community that I love. Uh, raising my children here and uh, having lived here, I've learned to appreciate it for exactly what it is. Um, and I, I love it with uh, all of its, uh, of its elements and, and especially because of the people that live here. Uh, the reason I'm running for city council is I believe that we are well positioned for the future, but we face a lot of change in the future. And I feel as if I've been a strong voice and an advocate for San Clemente's uniqueness and charm. Uh, I loved it the minute I moved here, and I want to ensure that with all of these different changes coming to San Clemente, that we retain what is essential, and that new development, uh, new businesses, uh, changes to San Clemente, that we ensure that that fits our character as opposed to changing essentially who we are to fit them. And so part of my entire push for this campaign and why I ask for your vote is to ensure that we have a council uh, that understands the issues and can make the right decisions uh, for the next four years and ensure that we find ourselves in an even better place four years from now. Thank you. Closing statement from Ms. Donchak. And those of you who know me know that I have a reputation for getting things done. And when I look back at the last four years, I look at the upcoming ribbon cutting on the affordable housing uh, senior project at the south end of town. I look at the new target in town. I look at our new library that's about ready to open next year. I look at the Courtney Sandcastle Universal Playground. I look at the La Pata Extension. And I feel like we've done some amazing things together. I'm looking for your vote for another term. And with that vote, I promise you the same level of dedication, the same level of rep representation, and the same level of integrity that I have proven that I can provide in the last four years. Thank you. And it would be a vote for Lori Donchek. Thank you. Now closing statement from Mr. Dahl. Well, I'd like to thank Cox Communications for allowing us to uh, be in your homes tonight or this afternoon. And uh, I would like your vote in November for City Council. As a 50-year resident of San Clemente, I've watched our population go from 12 to almost 65,000 residents. And during that period of time, I was a firefighter and a fire captain in the City of San Clemente for 38 years. I have institutional knowledge of the community. And as a 16-year city council member and four-term mayor, I believe that I did a great job at uh, building a great community that supports our citizens and supports our businesses. So in November, please vote for Jim Dahl. If you can go, want to go on the internet and find out more information, go to jimdahlcitycouncil.com. Thank you. Thank you. And a closing statement from Ms. Ward. Anyone that knows me knows how much I deeply care about the city. I think you need representatives on the city council who represent you and care as deeply about the city as you do. Our quality of life in San Clemente is not something that we can have take for granted or have uh, candidates 
on city council that are asleep at the wheel. You need someone that will totally represent you, fight for you, research everything, and go the extra mile that you need to ensure that your quality of life is, is followed. My name is Kathy Ward. I would ask for your, your vote. I am last on the ballot, but please remember that I am first for quality of life for San Clemente. Thank you. Thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, we are out of time. We'd like to thank Mickey Rathman, Ricardo Nickel, Tim Brown, Lori Donchak, Jim Dahl, and Kathy Ward for taking the time to be with us from their campaigns today. This and all the forums are available throughout the month on Cox Channel 3. You can also view them via Cox On Demand in the Free Zone and on Cox's YouTube channel. We encourage you to learn more about the South Orange County Economic Coalition and its ongoing efforts to promote the growth and vita economic vitality throughout the South Orange County region by visiting our website at www.economiccoalition.com. On behalf of the South Orange County Economic Coalition and Cox Communications, I'm Jim Leach. Thank you for being with us and be sure to vote on November 4th.